Influenza virus belongs to the family Orthomyxoviridae. It has been in the past and still is today a major cause of disease and mortality. Influenza is a respiratory infection which infects the nose, throat or lungs. It's typically spread from human to human and between mammals generally through contact with droplets ejected into the air during sneezing or coughing. <laughs> Most common symptoms include fever, sore throat, muscle pains, headache and coughing. In most severe cases, it causes pneumonia, which can be fatal, particularly in young children and the elderly. Flu is caused by three groups of viruses, known as influenza A, B and C. Inside the body, influenza A virus particles carried in droplets travel to the primary site of infection, the lower respiratory tract. Influenza A particles are pleomorphic, but when spherical, they have a diameter of about 100 nanometers. The particle is enveloped, and the envelope consists of a lipid bilayer. The hemagglutinin, HA, the neuraminidase, NA, and the M2 proteins project from the outer surface of the envelope. HA is a trimer, whereas NA and M2 are tetramers. Just beneath the envelope lies the M1 matrix protein. The core of the particle contains the viral genome. The RNA genome is made up of eight separate single-stranded segments of negative polarity. Each one of these segments contains a polymerase complex consisting of the viral proteins PB1, PB2 and PA. The recently discovered protein F2 may also be present in the polymerase complex. Furthermore, these genome molecules never exist as bare RNA. They are coated with multiple copies of the nuclear protein NP. All these proteins are essential for the activity of the RNA during transcription and replication. The eight RNA segments and associated proteins comprise the ribonucleoprotein complex, or RNP for short. Finally, the nuclear export protein, or non-structural protein 2, is also present in the virion. It links the ribonucleoprotein core with a matrix protein. The first step in the viral life cycle is the binding of the virion to the plasma membrane of the target cells, and more specifically, to the cell's receptors. The HA spike protein of the influenza virus binds specifically to carbohydrates called sialic acids. Sialic acids are bound to the receptors of the cells that influenza virus targets. This initiates entry into the cell. During endocytosis, the endosome becomes progressively acidified. At reduced pH, the viral HA protein mediates fusion of the viral envelope with the endosomal membrane. However, this fusion event alone does not cause viral uncoating. The ion channel M2 envelope protein opens in response to acidification and allows protons to enter the virion. As a result, the viral capsid dissociates from the ribonucleoprotein core, releasing it into the cytoplasm. A genome is a blueprint which codes for the viral proteins and contains the RNA signals for its own replication and packaging. All infectious influenza A particles have eight genome segments. Each of these eight individual segments encodes a different protein in negative polarity. For instance, three of the genes will eventually encode the proteins PB2, PB1, the recently discovered F2 and PA. These are non-structural proteins and together they will form the polymerase complex. 
then follow the segments encoding the spike hemagglutinin protein HA, the RNA binding protein NP, and the surface neuraminidase protein NA. The RNA segments encoding the matrix protein M1 and NS1 also encode two additional proteins. These can only be produced when eventually the messenger RNA corresponding to the segment encoding M1 is spliced. Consequently, a section of it is removed and the resulting shortened genome encodes M2, a protein with ion channel activity. Similarly, the messenger RNA corresponding to the genome coding for NS1 is spliced to encode the nuclear export protein NEP. Finally, it should be pointed out that in reality, all influenza genome segments are circularized with a 3' and 5' ends forming a base paired panhandle structure. So let's see how influenza virus replicates inside a cell. Influenza virus differs from most RNA viruses, as messenger RNA synthesis and genome replication take place in the nucleus of the cell. The RNP complexes are transported into the nucleus with the help of cellular proteins. These cellular proteins bind to sections of the RNP that contain nuclear localization signals, or NLS for short. With the help of these cellular proteins, the RNPs can enter the nucleus, where they will be transcribed and copied. The influenza virus transcription machinery does not produce capped messenger RNAs, which are necessary for translation. Instead, when inside the nucleus, the viral RNAs will steal caps from the host cell. More specifically, the polymerase complex of the viral RNA steals caps from cellular pre-messenger RNAs. This process, first discovered in influenza virus, is called cap snatching. After a cap is snatched, the polymerase copies the negative viral RNA template into its complementary positive strand and adds a poly-A tail at its 3' end. Thus, the transcription product is a messenger RNA with a cap and a poly-A tail. This way, all eight messenger RNAs are synthesized, each coding for an individual protein. Yet, influenza needs 11 proteins to replicate. So how is this achieved? Before exiting the nucleus, some of the viral messenger RNAs initially coding for the proteins NS1 and M1 are spliced. Certain cellular enzymes, known as spliceosomes, are recruited for this task. And these viral RNAs are spliced into smaller molecules. By using the host cell splicing mechanism, the virus can now produce two additional messenger RNAs. The proteins NEP and M2 will be the translation products of those spliced messenger RNAs. Additionally, the 11th protein F2 is believed to be the translation product of a second open reading frame within the PB1 gene. Now the viral messenger RNAs are exported out of the nucleus using the cell's transport machinery. The messenger RNAs coding for HA, NA and M2 are translated by ribosomes bound to the endoplasmic reticulum. The remaining viral proteins are produced in the cytoplasm. For translation to begin, the small ribosomal subunit attaches to the cap at the 5' end of a messenger RNA. As soon as it reaches the first AUG codon, the big subunit joins and translation begins. Once the proteins in the cytoplasm have been produced, they enter the nucleus, where they will play a crucial role in the replication cycle. 
The switch from messenger RNA to genome complementary RNA synthesis in influenza virus is still not fully understood. It's believed, but not proven, that the abundance of NP proteins in the nucleus enhances the synthesis of cRNA. Let's see what probably happens. The original RNA templates are still in the nucleus. The newly synthesized NP protein, which has also entered the nucleus, accumulates around the template RNAs. Once again, the polymerase complex of each RNA copies the entire length genome into its complementary positive strand. But this time, probably due to the presence of the NP protein, the transcription products will have no cap and no poly A tail. In other words, these genomes cannot be translated into proteins. Instead, genome replication can begin. Eventually, the nascent positive-stranded RNAs are copied back to full-length negative-stranded RNAs and are encapsidated by NP proteins. Other newly synthesized proteins, such as the NEP and those forming the polymerase complex, bind to the RNAs. These new RNP complexes exit the nucleus with the help of NEP and an array of host cell transport proteins. Now the RNPs make their way to the cell's plasma membrane where the progeny viruses can assemble and bud. In the meantime, the newly produced spike proteins HA and NA, as well as M2, have entered the cell's secretory pathway and make their way to the outer cell membrane. The newly formed RNP complexes and free M1 proteins now join the glycosylated proteins and an infectious progeny virion is about to be born, packaged with eight RNA segments. The mechanism of packaging is not yet fully understood. Finally, the virions are released via exocytosis. The neuraminidase protein Na is vital for release from the cell, as the hemagglutinin protein HA will bind to sialic acids at the cell surface. Na cleaves this bond and effectively allows the virion to be released. Now the virions are ready to infect more cells.